Hey guys, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we'll be tackling a couple of questions. The first being, how did Dumbledore defeat Gellert Grindelwald? And the second question being, why didn't Grindelwald go to Azkaban? We know Gellert Grindelwald as one of the darkest and most powerful wizards of all time, considered by most to be second to only Lord Voldemort in terms of sheer power, as far as dark wizards go. In a list of most dangerous dark wizards of all time, he would miss out on the top spot only because you know who arrived, a generation later, to steal his crown, Rita Skeeter wrote. Grindelwald was born in the year 1883, and in his younger years, he was a student at Durmstrang Institute. While attending the school, Grindelwald's sadistic nature shone through, and he was expelled for experimenting with twisted and dark magic. When he left school, Grindelwald met a young Albus Dumbledore, and the two spent every minute together. I think that the magical power of each young man can be partly attributed to the time that they spent with each other. Though Dumbledore and Grindelwald were close, there was definitely a crossroads where the two began to go down very different paths. It was Grindelwald's intention to find the Deathly Hallows, then lead a wizarding revolution that would effectively put an end to the International Statute of Secrecy, breaking down the secretive divide between the two worlds. This revolution would create a global power hierarchy that would place powerful witches and wizards at the top of the food chain, effectively giving them full control of muggles and muggle affairs. Dumbledore and Grindelwald eventually parted ways after a three-way duel that included Dumbledore's brother, Aberforth. The duel resulted in the death of Albus's sister, Ariana, and it effectively put an end to their relationship. After parting ways with Dumbledore, Grindelwald stole the Elder Wand from Miku Grigorovich, who held the wand at that time. Grigorovich, the proprietor of a wand shop, started spreading rumors about his possession of the wand, hoping that it would improve business. This was a foolish and fatal error, as Grindelwald stole the wand from his workshop in the middle of the night. After stealing the wand, Grindelwald began to amass his following a legion of fanatics that would help him to facilitate all sorts of attacks across Europe. Grindelwald is responsible for committing some of the most heinous crimes that you could think of, including mass slaughtering of wizards and even attacks on muggles. At the height of his power, he was seemingly unstoppable. With an army of fanatics and the possession of the Elder Wand, there was only one person who could stop him, Dumbledore. Dumbledore was the yin to Grindelwald's yang, and the two had a rich history each of them able to attribute much of their magical capabilities to the time that they spent together in their formative years. When Dumbledore graduated from Hogwarts, he returned to Godric's Hollow to be with his family after the death of his mother, Kendra Dumbledore. Albus, being the eldest sibling, knew that he would have to take care of his younger siblings, particularly Ariana, who had problems controlling her magical abilities. It was during this time that Albus became friends with Gellert Grindelwald, a young man who had moved to his small village to live with his aunt Matilda Bagshot, who was a family friend of the Dumbledores and Grindelwald's great aunt. The two immediately recognized that they were different and had magical capabilities far surpassing the average witch or wizard. Because of this, the two boys hit it off immediately. Though it is not directly stated, I am sure that the friendship between Dumbledore and Grindelwald undoubtedly resulted in increasingly powerful magical abilities for both boys, as they were able to challenge each other's abilities on a consistent basis. Before befriending Grindelwald, Albus always outshone every other witch and wizard that he interacted with, regardless of how powerful they were. Grindelwald's great aunt, Batilda Bagshot, was a gifted magical historian and the author of A History of Magic, which was used to teach students at Hogwarts. From this, we can assume that powerful magic was clearly in Grindelwald's bloodline, and as a result, he became a very powerful wizard at a young age, just like Dumbledore. The coexistence of the two young powerful wizards meant that they were challenged by another for the first time, resulting in even greater power for the both of them. So they're both immensely powerful wizards, but was Dumbledore truly more powerful than Grindelwald? Even with the Elder Wand? How did he defeat him? How was Grindelwald's reign of terror finally stopped? As Grindelwald grew in power over the years, the public opinion quickly became that Dumbledore would be the only man capable of stopping him. Because of Dumbledore and Grindelwald's history, Dumbledore initially shrugged it off, 
allowing Grindelwald to become more and more powerful as the years progressed. In truth, the main reason for Dumbledore's unwillingness to fight Grindelwald was that in their youth, Grindelwald and Dumbledore entered into a blood pact. This blood pact, sealed by magic, stated that the two would never be able to fight each other. The blood pact was stored in a vial that was kept on Grindelwald's person, and it was not until 1927, when Newt Scamander stole the vial, that the possibility of the two battling became a reality. Sometime between 1927 and 1945, the vial containing the blood pact was destroyed, allowing the two great wizards to clash once more. Grindelwald's actions had become too terrible, and his level of power was reaching insane new heights. Because of this, Dumbledore knew that he finally had to take action. In the year 1945, a duel finally occurred between the Elder One wielding Grindelwald and the powerful Albus Dumbledore. British pureblood wizard Elphias Doge described their duel as the greatest of all time, and that no duel ever matched it. I can't wait to see this on screen, as my favourite battle so far was the duel between Voldemort and Dumbledore in the Ministry Atrium. I wonder if they can top it. Dumbledore was successful in edging out Grindelwald during their duel, and after defeating him won allegiance of the Elder Wand, becoming its new master. Though it isn't explicitly stated anywhere which spells are used during their epic battle, I suspect the two were frequenting some of their most powerful favourites. Both men were masters of the elements, and displayed unmatched levels of skill when dealing with manipulation of the elements. With Grindelwald, we've seen these elemental spells exhibited in a number of instances. The first time being when he unleashed a white blast of magic, instantly destroying five powerful European auras, the second time when Grindelwald duels Newt's commander, sending out a spell that generated shockwaves of blue lightning, and thirdly, the famed Protego Diabolica, a powerful protective ring of fire that incinerates anyone who comes close to you. With this spell, he was able to effortlessly fend off over 30 auras. And these are just three examples of the spells that he has. He probably has so many options to choose from, but I bet he used at least one of these three in his duel against Dumbledore. But Dumbledore has a few tricks up his sleeve as well, and over the course of the books and films has really shown us what he's capable of. In his duel against Voldemort in the Ministry Atrium, we see his elemental expertise shine through, when he creates some sort of complicated hydrokinetic spell. In the same duel against Voldemort, we see Dumbledore's transfiguration ability shine through as well, when he turns all of the glass shards sent towards him into sand. However, I think Dumbledore's most impressive display of magic was when he produced a firestorm to ward off the Inferi. Firestorm produces a large ring of fire from the caster's wand, and from this ring the caster is able to shoot jets or balls of fire at opponents. Impressive stuff. So even though we don't know exactly which spells were cast, I think that it's safe to say that Dumbledore definitely has the capability to destroy Grindelwald and I'm quite eager to finally witness which spells are used when this duel eventually occurs in the film adaptation Fantastic Beasts. Though Dumbledore was successful in defeating Grindelwald, he did spare his life, and after his defeat, Grindelwald was sent to prison. As it was the year 1945, and given the fact that Grindelwald was defeated by a British wizard, one might expect that Grindelwald would be sent to a prison with the highest security possible, a prison like Azkaban. However, ironically, Grindelwald was imprisoned in Nermengard Castle, the same fortress that he himself built to hold his enemies. Nermengard was the base camp for all of his operations during his reign of power, so it's interesting that he would be imprisoned in such familiar territory. Because of Grindelwald's ties to Austria, he was imprisoned in Nermengard rather than Azkaban. This turned out to be the appropriate choice as he never escaped, but I personally would have questioned it at the time. Azkaban is unparalleled at securing dark witches and wizards, and it has Dementors, which Nermengard doesn't have. The main safeguard of Nermengard is that the prisoners are denied their ones, similar to Azkaban. I can only assume that there must be preventative charms placed around the castle as well. Grindelwald was imprisoned in the topmost prison cell in the highest tower of Nermengard, and it was there that he spent 53 years of his life before eventually being murdered by Voldemort. 
And that's it for this video. What do you guys think? What spell did Dumbledore use to finally apprehend Grindelwald? Let me know down in the comment section below. As always, please hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the content. Until next time, you're a wizard, wizard Harry! Harry.